I've got this old Sears Craftsman miter saw <clears throat> and it just stopped working. And I read up online and it said it's probably the switch. Um, could be a couple of other things. So I was like, all right, I pulled out a, my cheapy multimeter and I'm checking the switch. So basically with the um, power unplugged, if you hook up the uh, terminals to your plug and you hit the switch, you should get something. You should get some kind of reading. Like right now it reads one. If it was working, when I click it, you'll see that number change. <clears throat> and when I click this, nothing changes, which is really odd. So I figure, oh, it's got to be the switch. So hold on a second. I'll pull the switch off. So this is the switch pulled out of the handle, the contact button or the button that when you pull the, the red handle down, it, it engages the switch here. So I test on all three contact points and on two of them, of course, when you press the switch, you get something. Now that should happen when I press the switch and I'm just testing the plug as well because um, you're testing for continuity. So in this case, the switch seems to be okay. <laughs> So what I did next is pull the housing actually off and trace those wires that are going inside. And sure enough, one of the wires was unplugged. I guess the vibration of the saw threw that wire off. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it back in, put everything back together, and then I'll put the uh, power cord back in and I'll run a test. But I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And this is where it ended up having the problem. So this is the main power cord going inside the unit. And this little <clears throat> um, white wire was unplugged. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it back in. I checked the switch once I plugged it back in for continuity and everything fired up right away. So I should uh, be able to just put that back together. There's a little male and female plug on it. Plug the whole chop saw back in and it should fire right up. And one last thing that I forgot, when you're putting it back on, the uh, the spindle there lines up with the two bushings that are inside. There's one on each side, and there's a plastic cap. You just pull it off, and you're going to see a spring on there, and then connect to that as a contactor. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those out right now, and then the whole unit will slide on. If you try to slide it on without doing that, you're going to bust that spring right off. So it's all put back together, <clears throat> put the contactors back in, and right now we're doing the continuity test with the switch, hooked it up. The plug, of course, is not plugged in. We're just checking the continuity in. We have the probes in, squeeze the power button, and we get continuity. So it should be wired and ready to go, and I'm going to fire it right back up right now. But all it was was a loose wire on the inside of that housing. It took me all of 15 minutes to fix this. Plugged in, ready to go. Fires right up, good as new. So again, all it was was a wire on the inside that had shaken loose, which was really odd because it was in the middle of a cut. Um, I guess just the vibration when I was cutting uh, jarred it loose. So real quick fix, check for continuity first, check your switch, check these little contactors, make sure they're making contact with the bushings and um, maybe it'll help you out. Good luck.